fifth generation citrus grower Greg Parr and his family know a thing or two about growing citrus with the family's farming operations in the North Burnett, Central Queensland, spanning over 70 years. Greg is a large producer of lemons in Queensland and is interested in improving the consistency and quality of his lemons into export markets. I'm a fifth generation citrus grower, so my, my family started in the western suburbs of Sydney uh, a long time ago and my parents moved up here in 1977. So, Fantastic. That's, yeah. a, that's a big time in the industry. It's a long time in the industry. There's a lot of history there. Greg, what's happening in the uh, lemon market in Australia? So the lemon market domestically and export-wise was, was very strong uh, through sort of 15, 2015, 2016, 2017. So there's been significant plantings uh, industry-wide, both in Queensland and in southern states. Production's starting to increase and, and there's talks of it nearly doubling uh, in three to five years' time. So once production hits a point, Australia can only consume so many of them. So it's something that we need to develop to ensure that the industry, especially for lemons, remains strong. What are the requirements for uh, accessing some of those uh, export markets? We have to go through a process of cold disinfestation, whereby we cool the fruit to below certain temperatures for a certain amount of time to ensure that no fruit fly larvae survive the journey to these other countries where they obviously don't want them because it's a significant pest of the industry. But it also adds in an element of risk to the process. Anything that we have to degree with ethylene, it increases the risk of chilling injury, which can come out as dark brown lesions on the fruit or clear rots and things like that. So Greg, what is degreening? It's a particular thing, especially up in Queensland, where we have warmer nights leading into the season. So the fruit matures on the inside quicker than it matures on the outside. All of our early season varieties up here are harvested green or, or just turning. If we were to wait for them to ripen on the tree naturally and colour-wise, a lot of the internal characteristics would be unsuitable for export, especially for things like mandarins. They would, get not, they would not have enough acid to last a journey and things like that. So. We'll place them in a, in a cold room of sorts uh, with controlled temperature and um, small concentrations of ethylene just to encourage the ripening of the outside of the fruit to ensure that the colour of that fruit matches the internal maturity of that fruit. Can you tell us about the journey that you ended into trying to better understand what might be causing um, chilling injury? It was always hard to get information back to try and tie it back through the chain. With the help of DAF, what we decided to do was start to really look at the process from condition of fruit on the tree all the way to market. We started to monitor ethylene and temperature in our degreening processes. I was trying to find the ideal parts per million of ethylene, the ideal, ideal amount of time and the ideal temperature to try and eliminate the chilling injury on arrival. So we found a lot of areas where there was a lot of variability in a single container that you wouldn't generally think that there would be. What changes have you made with regard to um, ethylene and temperature management? So we've made sure that we're, if we're going to target export, we're getting all the fruit and consolidating it of similar maturity levels in our, in our better rooms where we can control temperature around the 26 degrees and not jumping too far away from that. Updated ethylene delivery to ensure that we're holding it five parts per million constantly, which gives us the right timing for degreening and also the right colour. We try to harvest bigger runs um, and ensure that the shed can get that packed in the least amount of days. We've also identified through some of the work that, that DAF did, it's better to hold the fruit for two to five days at six to seven degrees. So we've implemented a process whereby we do step change the temperature down from the six to seven degrees over three days instead of overnight. As we were monitoring, we found that every degree warmer that we could ship the fruit, there was a, a significant improvement in outturn results. We were making sure we target the vessels and the deliveries to match with the temperatures so that if we can possibly do it to meet the market, we're shipping at the higher temperature for the longer days. It seems that Glengrove Orchards are very much focused on those longer term improvements in the relationships our partners in China that we're shipping to, they have a good understanding of what's required of our products that we ship there um, and what to do with them when they arrive. Making sure that if it needs long shelf life for them to market it, that they're keeping it cold. If they want it to have the best shelf life, they need to bring temperatures up gradually. When we share that information with importers, it means that they can 
confidently order knowing that they're going to get the product that they want. They know how to deal with it when it gets there. They know how we operate as a business and, and ensuring that we're doing everything right along the way. The fruit's selling better and they have obviously more chance to make profits and as are we. We had to eliminate a lot of the variability before we started to, to nail down what was actually going wrong. So having a good understanding of what your variables are and the risks are inherent in what you're doing, if you can have that sort of stuff ironed out first and then it makes it much easier to target the problem. So that's my advice, make sure you have all your house in order before you try and find the solution to the problem.